Okay, so now we're going to get into inking this piece. This is a sketch right here in my backyard, or my front yard actually. Um, uh, I've changed the camera angle so you can get it from this side, because I'm right-handed. It might be a little bit more convenient to look at it while I work from this angle. I know I um, probably should have shaved for these videos, right? But this is sort of a... Uh, when you don't have to go anywhere, why bother? And when you do work, you wear a face mask a lot of times. Who's going to see your uh, scruff? Of course, most people who know me already know that I don't really care about shaving all that often. I'm not the most regular, regular uh, shaving kind of guy. All right. So here's the first thing I usually do when I start one of these pieces is I kind of drop my easel first of all, I'm trying to get the angle right. Um, I start with a big chunky fat marker, I want to get some of the big, big um, heavy contrast areas in there where I want to throw some, some big shadows in and stuff so I'll go, through, go around here with one of these big bulky fat chunky markers like this. Um, Good way to block things in, I find. I think a lot of artists probably may start with this as well. You know, painters as well start with the shadows first sometimes, or at least their darker tones. All right. Okay, some of the stuff here is just sort of filler darks, so doesn't have to be super detailed, just get some heavy, strong, dark parts filled in. Get the detailing in later. Now, I may stop talking at certain points and just get into it, so, you know, I don't have my uh, perfect Bob Ross skill down yet where I can continuously talk the entire time um, to, a, to the camera there while I'm drawing. gotten pretty used to talking while drawing, you know, when, while teaching someone like a drawing class where I did a sample, but I'm not sure about the camera. This is the first time that I've drawn uh, while looking at a having a camera sort of catching me. Here's the cast iron little grate thing. Really roughly put it in there because it is quite a rough looking thing, so it could be bumpy. Right, like that. Alright, that's good. Now the thing I find difficult is there's not a lot of real dark stuff around here, so I have to kind of just invent areas that I want to make a little bit darker. Um, especially daytime like this, there's not a lot of extreme darks everywhere, so I do have to get a bit creative and sort of fake it, pump up the contrast in certain things. Like, like, this is obviously not that dark, this bucket here, but we're going to bulk it up and give it a stronger shadow on one side. Okay. And then there actually is quite a bit of shadow on the uh, step behind this bucket, so it gives me some something to look at and a bit of shadow to draw. Right here in the step, it's very dark, so I'm going to fill that in. I'm gonna fill it right in like that. The shadow has sort of an angle to it from the angle of the bucket here. Down like that, bump Comes across, and down again. So all of this is sort of shadow. I guess it's it's shadow of the bucket itself, actually. I'm just gonna get all sort of blocked in there. Yeah, see that gives me a good dark, good dark zone. Nice, okay. And I'm gonna throw a little dark right here. So 
some of the darkest shadows, some of the darkest, some kind of staining and general ugliness here and there. This pipe. This pipe. I don't want to get a reasonably straight line here, but it's a little bit hard for the chunky marker to get a super straight line without using a ruler and cheating. There we go. That's close. A little bit of scratch there, so I'm going to go fatter. This is not the edge of the pipe, this is the shadow behind the pipe. And then it comes down a little bit like this. Okay. Now working with markers, you don't get a lot of gray. It's, it gets real high contrast real fast. Okay. I'm gonna get, sometimes I'll use a, a dried up marker to get some of this contrast, but I think today, let's go nuts. There's Bob Ross for you. Let's have some fun and get some real contrast going on here. Let's fill it in and darker. Let's get some drama, you know? Everyone likes some drama in their drawings. Some happy little drama. Okay. I'll put a little break right there. That way I can maybe put a crack in later. I'll come down here and get that shadow growing some more. Okay, that was that. And on this side of the pole, we're not going to get as much shadow, but maybe in a few spots where it comes close to the wall over here, we'll, we'll notice that it's there. Uh, okay, and then there's these bricks. Get some little angles to show the angle of those bricks like that all right there's a drain pipe right here this is for the roof roof runoff drain pipe right there get that logged in there's some rings on it a couple of rings like that top of it okay. now i may come back with this big marker but what I'm going to do now is set it aside. We'll set that aside and uh, go into it with a slightly like a medium, a medium marker. Hmm. Okay, so put a little pause there so I can grab a good marker. This is the same company. It's Monami. It's a Korean pen company. Um, I tend to buy a lot of stuff from Monami. I think it's Korean. Okay. I always forget where they're from. All I know is Monami is everywhere in Korea, so my guess. I wouldn't want to make a mistake though, but anyway, I do like Monami. That's a good brand for markers. I'm going to use this like heavier marker here. Because it's got like a, a stiffer end on it, I can get some heavy lines that are a bit stronger before I get into like the delicate stuff that I would use my brush pen for. This gives me a uh, ability to put some sharp, sharp marks on there. And this particular one is a bit dry, so I'm gonna switch off to a uh, when it's got a bit more fresh ink in it. Now I'll still use that dry one for other things, but for right now, let's uh, let's save that one. Let's see, with this one, I can just kind of make qu quick lines. Some quick lines here. Okay, little little markers, big markers. Need a few tools. There's some shadows here of the hinges that I just just noticed that look pretty cool, so we'll put those on. Here a delivery man next door announcing he's here, dropping something off. Sound of it sounded like uh, 
Mother wasn't home, but the son answered the door and said, I'm her son. Now, when I start a drawing like this, it is, uh, you know, I'm never quite exactly sure how much detail I'm going to go into. I'm never exactly sure like what parts I'm going to leave out and keep in until I start working it and decide how I feel as I go. Sometimes it'll be very time consuming with lots of details and sometimes it will be, uh, you know, more sketchy and, and loose. I hope you weren't just looking in my ear. Were you just looking in my ear? I'm sorry about that. I just noticed I was leaning in, giving you basically my head, right? It's like, hey, here's here's ten minutes of looking at Mike's head. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. I'll try to lean back and let the drawing be the center stage. Okay, there's some different things here. There's some wires. Okay. Now, the one thing that I'm not very careful about that I should be more careful about is you know I'm touching the paper a lot with my hand um, you know a more wise artist would find ways to avoid that because you know you you don't want to get your hand grease on the drawing you don't want to you know make a mess of things these are permanent markers I don't have to worry about smudging but it is a good rule of thumb to try to keep your hands off the paper when you're working Of course, these days we're washing our hands so often that there's no time for grease to build up on our hands. <laughs> All right, got one hinge here, and kind of roughly drop in the second hinge up here. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go really minimal with detailing on this doorway because I don't want the door to get very much attention. If I went into it with too much detail, um, people would look over here and, you know, check out the door a bit too much. And I think what I want to do is keep the interest right here. I mean, this is kind of what I decided to draw. So I do want to control the viewer's eye somehow by, you know, adjusting the, kind of like adjusting the focus, right? Not letting people see everything so clearly. Okay, so we got a step right here. There's one step. There's a crack right there, the second step. And there's a third step. Now, when you're close up, you know, when you're drawing the close up stuff, you can go ahead and use a fat chunky line and that fat chunky line is you know illustrators kind of trick to help people zoom in and use a really fat line up here in the front and add some wiggle to it and kind of uh, you know make it look a bit bumpy and stuff because I think if you're closer up you're gonna see the textures of things more right There's that. I left this little gap here because there's some plants that are overhanging that I'm going to put in after once I get into more detailed spots. There we go. Okay. Now, a drawing like this, you know, I'm going to take about an hour on it, I think possibly longer, but I'm not going to make you sit through the whole hour. I'm going to finish it afterwards, and then, you know, you can take a look on Instagram. Uh, I'll post it on Instagram when it's finished. I may post like a little 10 second video on YouTube if you're only watching on YouTube, so that you can at least see the finished piece. Maybe I'll come back right when I'm finishing it up. but. That's all you need to see for now. I'm getting it penciled in with pencil. Second step was this sort of marker work. Third step is going to be the more detailed pen stuff where I'm going to use this, this little brush pen. Same brand, Mon Ami. 
little brush pen. And that's where I'm going to get into the fine detailing. Um, and that's the slower, slower part of the process. Lots of little tiny marks and little tiny lines like that. But that's all for this video. That was marker work, right? Inking with markers, two different kinds. Step three is the fine detailing.